Hey, good morning, FreeCalc. So we got to do now right here, which uh, involves special triangles. You got the 45, 45, 90 over here on the left. You got the 30, 60, 90 over here on the right. Uh, go ahead and uh, give that a shot. Hit pause on the video so you got your answers. Or if you have no idea how to do the stuff that you learned years ago back in geometry, uh, just let the video roll. Hey, welcome back. Let's jump into special triangles. If you did that, do now. That's awesome. Uh, we'll check that in a minute. But for everybody else, let's refresh our memories about how to do special triangles. So first up, we got the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you got the two sides that are both congruent. I got those highlighted both in green. So whatever number you've got for a side length on one side, the other will be identical. The hypotenuse is the blue side, and to find the length of the hypotenuse, you're going to take the green side, whatever that number is, multiply it by the square root of 2. That will give you the length of the hypotenuse. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, all three sides of the triangle are different lengths, corresponding to the different sized angles. And the easiest way to describe the side lengths of the sides of the other sides is in terms of the shortest leg, which would be the side opposite the 30 degree angle. So from the short leg to find the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is twice as long. So we take the short leg and double it. To find the medium side, you're going to take that short side, x, multiply it by the square root of 3. Okay, so it's important to remember also that special triangles, it's not like some magic trick that works here. Uh, 30, 60, 90 triangles, 45, 90 triangles, both are similar triangles. All triangles that have the same angle measurements are referred to as similar. It means that their side lengths are proportional. So these little formulas that we're describing here with the 30, 60, 90, that is the proportion that we use to find the lengths of the sides for every 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's because they're all have the same ratio. That's why this works. So it's not a magic trick. So let's jump back to that do now and now see if uh, we got a better opportunity to get this thing knocked out of the park. So hit pause, uh, work through this one and uh, hit play once you got your answers worked out. All right. So. On the 45, 45, 90 triangle, we got a side length of 3. The other leg, W, is going to have the same length of 3. And the hypotenuse is going to be that same number 3, but multiplied times the square root of 2. Don't use your calculator. We're just going to leave that in radical form. So no decimals here. Uh, on the 30, 60, 90 triangle over here on the right, we were given the short side that was 5. And so uh, alphabetical order to get Y. Just the medium side is 5 times the square root of 3, or 5 radical 3. And back up to the 5, to get the hypotenuse, we double the 5 to get 10. So the hypotenuse is 10. OK, so back to these notes. What if we need to go the opposite direction? If on a 45, 45, 90 triangle, what if we're given the hypotenuse and need to find the length of the leg? So that's the reverse of what we just did which means we do the reverse operation. So if you need to find the length of a leg, you take the hypotenuse, divide it by the square root of 2. For the 30, 60, 90 triangles, what if we don't have the short leg to start with? What if we're given one of those other two side lengths as a starting point? So if we need to find the short leg, it depends where we're coming from. If we are given the hypotenuse, we're going to take the hypotenuse, divide by 2. That will give us the length of the short leg. On the other hand, if we're given the medium side, we're going to take that side length and divide by radical 3. So let's skip ahead to a new do now problem. Here are two new special triangles where you're given the length of the hypotenuse. Hit pause on your video, see if you're going to work these through on your own. Once you got your answers, go ahead and hit play, and we'll look at these together. All right, so answers. For the 30, 60, 90, we were given the hypotenuse of 8. Cut that in half to get the short side. So the A is going to be 4. Once you know the short side, 4, you can take that multiplied by the square root of 3 to get the medium side, which is b. 
so B is 4 radical 3. Over here on the right-hand side, the 45, 45, 90 triangle, we're given the hypotenuse, which was 6. So we know both of the other two legs are identical. We just take the hypotenuse of 6, divide by radical 2, and that gives us our side lengths for both X and Y. But wait a minute. That is not acceptable math grammar. You cannot have a fraction with a radical in the denominator. So what we're going to have to do is a process called rationalizing the denominator. You see it there in the directions. So rationalizing the directions uh, is a process I refer to as using a tricky one. So here's the deal. That 6 times the square root of 2 is bad grammar. We can't leave it that way. So we're going to have to do something to make it have a different appearance without changing the value that it equals. So if I was to multiply by the number 1, you see here I got this giant blue 1. If I multiply anything by the by 1, I'm going to get the exact same thing I started with. So multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. But multiplying by 1 also doesn't change the appearance of anything. That's not going to help me get good grammar. So instead of multiplying by something that actually looks like 1, I'm going to be tricky and multiply by something that doesn't look like 1, but actually equals 1. The way I'm going to do that is take this denominator of square root of 2, I'm going to create a fraction where I put radical 2 divided by itself. So I get radical 2 over radical 2, because anything divided by itself equals 1. So this blue fraction right here is actually a 1. It just looks tricky. And now what's going to happen is when I multiply by radical 2 over radical 2, it will change the appearance of my original red fraction, but not change the value. So it's not going to equal the exact same thing. It's just going to look better, so I'll have good grammar. So here's the way that goes. I'm going to multiply straight across numerator times numerator. So it's going to be 6 radical 2 on the top. And then straight across the denominators, since they are both square roots, I'm going to leave my answer inside a square root. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, every single time you rationalize the denominator, it's going to give you a perfect square in the denominator, the square root of 4. You can do that because 4 is a perfect number. So the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to change that to a 2. This 6 radical 2 in the numerator didn't change. And now I have an equivalent fraction to the red 6 over radical 2 that I started with. But now there's no radical in the denominator. This is good math grammar. Sometimes you can reduce this fraction. Like in this case, we're going to do one more step because we're going to reduce that. Sometimes once you get to this step, you're done. But the 6 divided by 2 part that is not inside the radical, that can be reduced. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And the radical 2 is still being multiplied onto that. So 3 radical 2, that is where these answers came from back here for x and y. I wrote them in correct grammar ahead of time. You've been wondering where the heck that came from. It came from rationalizing the denominator.